Hi, um, I'm Donna Williams and I wanted to do a clip about um, the whole cancer thing. Um, I guess I really want to say something about the self-esteem stuff and um, about women. I think one of the things that was a real challenge is when you lose a breast, you, women are, their beauty tends to be defined by, you know, their breasts or their hair and a lot of the clothing that is sold and certainly everything on TV and images and whatever, it's all about showing off um, breasts and cleavage and even the people who don't have a lot of that, it's about showing off your hair. And so with breast cancer, one of the things I think that I had to do was find clothes that, that, that worked with my personality, that, that worried about working with my breasts, or <laughs> um, that I had to make a choice. Did I want to hide in my clothing um, you know, was I ashamed or uh, was I somebody who was going to work with this um, like an artist? And I really drew on that whole artist side because as an artist, we artists have often got a, a very strong sense of aesthetics and symmetry and um, as a sculptor, uh, what a, a form and texture and and what feels balanced and what sits right and when you've had mastectomy especially if you've had a had one side and um, uh, you know it's not all nice and smooth and it's not all perfect and it's not symmetrical and um, uh, it's just not what as an artist you have come to think of as aesthetic and uh, and there's this this feeling that it never, these things never sit right or something, <laughs> and um, uh, then I I really drew on the other side of what it is to be an artist, and that is that there's no such thing as a mistake. And when you're when you start out as an artist, you keep thinking, oh, I'm going to fix this. That was a mistake, or you know. Um, uh, oh, that, that really jars me, I'll correct it, I'll hide it. And as a professional artist, you learn that the, the, some of the very best works you ever did <laughs> was where you didn't hide it, where you, you, you just took that odd thing, that strange piece, and you took it to another place. You, you made it have its own belonging within the piece of art. and. I guess um, things like having having a breast removed or having you know having one breast, uh, you you you're in that that strange identity thing of you know do I hide this? Do I wear a prosthesis? You know, trying to feel that I have what I had before or that I look like I have what I had before. How does that sit with me as a person? How do I feel about having one breast left? <laughs> How do I feel in society about, um, I guess, being an amputee? And But it's an amputee of a very strange kind because we don't go around opening doors with our breast or answering a telephone or writing a book or anything. So <laughs> it's, um, it's hard to um, kind of uh, uh, say this is, you know, this is disabling me because it's not like you lost your arm or your leg um, or one of your eyes. Uh, it's, it's, it's your breast. At the same time, it, what, it, what it loses uh, in terms of your self-image and your feelings about identity as a woman and your... Yeah, your, your sense of the history of your own body and that's really very significant as well and um, uh, I think on top of that heading towards chemo where you're going to lose the next part you're going to lose your hair uh, so in a very short space of time you've lost your breast and now you're going to lose your hair and when you lose a breast you also lose um, 
uh, a lot of the sensation. So for a long time it was like, this isn't my chest or I feel sorry for this or look after this, but I didn't really identify with it. And I, there were large parts that were you know, painful and um, parts that were quite numb where the nerves had been, you know, nerve endings were uh, damaged and cut out and all kinds of things. And then eventually, once you get past all the really, once, once you put all the ugly stuff aside and all the sad stuff aside and even the pain stuff aside and actually explore the breast and you, the one that's been cut off, that's your chest. And um, you actually find as you're healing which parts are sore and which parts are not so sore, which parts are numb and which parts aren't. And I was really pleased to find that. Um, and although, you know, I guess as women we are, you know, we're taught don't do this. But once you once you have a chest, it's actually pretty natural, especially, I guess, as a, a sculptor. And, um, and once you actually feel that, you say, oh, wow, I've still got sensation there. Um, it's a flat chest, but it's, um, I have all this sensation there. It belongs to me. I haven't got a hole in the front of me. Um, you know, this is part of the hole in me in my back and my chest, and I'm still here. So um, I had, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, women almost expected to want reconstruction or almost expected to um, be unable to form attachment to their flat chest and I then even though I didn't want reconstruction I was I, I then thought well you know what's wrong with me is that invalid and um, I saw a clip of a woman who had reconstruction who was saying for the for her she wasn't satisfied about it in the end and she wished that if she did the journey again she would have accepted and made friends with her flat chest um, from the mastectomy and I felt suddenly like I could uh, I could breathe and I could uh, I could make that make peace about my my flat side and I felt really grateful that there was nothing numb about it. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, there's some numb parts about it, but there's a lot of it that's still got sensation. And um, I thought about um, uh, reconstruction and how numb everything would feel and how much further out and away from the chest wall it would be and how I then wouldn't, I would have less, sensation I guess also for two lots or more of surgery to the same side and I felt well when I hug with this flat chest I can feel uh, people's body and um, my husband's body particularly but even the other people that I hug and I feel that I'm real that I'm hugging with 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 my own chest and my own sensation that's in that and the meanness that's in that and um, yeah, I guess um, uh, that that mattered to me. I also felt that my heart was even closer to people because it wasn't behind a breast anymore and I could feel my husband's heartbeat in my chest, which was, I think, actually pretty romantic. So even though when I came out, you know, it, it was certainly... Uh, quite horror for me because with mastectomy you know it's the area is a bit concave and it's a bit like a cattle grid and and the, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to just feel this is really this is awful you know this is scarred this is bumpy this isn't a smooth contoured man's chest this is a you know this is what's left when they've taken everything all that all that tissue out and uh yeah so i and the other thing is um, living with uh, having one left so um, there's that stuff about um, uh, how you're going to live with that and, and certainly uh, looking at the the some of the uh, people in other cultures and other times who basically strap down their breasts and so pretty much that's what I've done with the, the remaining one 
um, and uh, because of the type of cells that I had um, in the first cancer and chances of recurrence, I'm going to be losing that one. So I will do that at the end of chemo. And so that changes things too. It's like, do I stay, you know, attached to that one? <laughs> do I be kind to it? Is it like a visitor? Uh, is it a temporary resident? Um, uh, and I, I guess, um, yeah, it's it's a strange, almost, uh, it's a relationship in mo in motion um, to your own body, to womanhood, to your place among other women, in your relationship. Um, yeah, among your friends uh, who are likely going to be breasted people. Um, I think that's another thing was like <laughs> the language, you know, I, 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 I say, you know, is this, are you talking from a breasted perspective or a flat chest perspective, you know, or um, uh, I talked about breast neutral clothing. <laughs> And uh, I tended to uh, find clothes that had a lot of pattern and um, things that I could wear, like little overcoat, vesty, hanging things and um, that sort of stuff. Not so much to hide, but to work with what my body now is. And I guess if I was um, a very large person, I would maybe dress to uh, work with with that in a way that I feel comfortable and I feel I'm presenting what I have and what I am in the most artistic way <laughs> and the same if I'm underweight and the same if I have one breast uh, so uh, I think there's a difference between that and just dressing like you're ashamed or like you wish you weren't there or like you are apologizing for your existence and I guess uh, the thing with my hair is I decided to take that off before I did chemo because I, after surgery, I was waiting for test results for immune issues because I have immune deficiencies and also some other little results relating to the cancer stuff. And that gave me an opportunity to say, well, here I am relatively healthy as healthy as post-surgical gets and uh, before I'm feeling ill or vomity or diarrhea or my you know just mouth ulcers or various things that are going to be probably fairly uh, unexciting about chemo I wanted to I wanted to come to terms with myself as a bald woman <laughs> who didn't have breasts to show who didn't have hair to show I have not you know I haven't really over invested in my looks parts of me have because I have DID which means that there's parts of my my fractured self that are very girly and invested in all that stuff and parts that are quite uninvested in it um, but on the whole, I think there's people who are more invested in their looks. But I think even those of us who aren't, the indoctrination is still in there. And when you are challenged with this stuff, it that indoctrination comes to the surface. So one of the things when you become a, a bald person is I wanted to look at myself and say boldness is not part of being sick. You can be bald and it's not be, you know, the boldness isn't vomiting, the boldness isn't diarrhea, the boldness isn't pain, the boldness is just boldness. And um, it took a while to find uh, a framework for that, like, um, uh, who are the beautiful bold women? And, uh, like, you know, you don't ever see a bold Barbie unless the child's cropped all its hair off. And, um, you know, there's people like Sinead O'Connor, it's very attractive bald woman and um, there's also um, a lot of monks and I, I, I've seen female monks who I think are very sometimes just as beautiful as you are inside comes through regardless of your hair so I um, I'm glad I made peace with that because I start chemo next week 
and I know I will probably uh, lose my eyebrows. I, uh, I guess the fact that I have glasses means that sometimes I don't even see my eyebrows. <laughs> so I've kind of, um, I've always, I've had glasses for years and I, I think it's kind of good that I'm not necessarily used to, um, I'm not necessarily used to the permanence of my eyebrows. I guess I will probably lose some eyelashes and I am hoping that I'll just deal with that too and uh, not feel embarrassed uh, about being out. Um, yeah, just get, get those mental Nazis, you know, out of my head. Not that they're that full on, but for some parts of me, yeah because uh, I guess being a person who grew up with disabilities, uh, the fear of bigots, fear of narcissists, uh, having been abused by uh, someone who very, was very disability phobic and uh, yeah, all that stuff. Um, and that's sort of still in there somewhere. But I think I'm, I'm doing it pretty well. So I hope this video has uh, helped people who are going through similar to have a think about how um, it's really about, about you as a person and your life and maintaining awareness of your personhood and that it really is much more than hair, it's more than breasts. Uh, it's more than eyebrows, and uh, but equally taking the time to make peace with the body you have um, or the body that's left, and so that you can make clear choices because making choices from fear or making choices whilst in pain is very different to uh, letting sort of fit, letting the dust settle on the surgery and say, okay, well. How do I feel and how would I feel you know, if I go for reconstruction, I'm, I'm looking for what's going to make me look like I used to look or look like other women or what will work for my partner so I don't have to feel, you know, insecure that they're going to go off with some breast person, whatever. But um, I think I wanted to validate uh, those women who, who choose to to go forward with the flat chest because I don't see uh, much about them and I want to say that, um, that that made sense to me and it will make sense to some people that they they feel okay about, about having a flat chest and that they may want to retain what sensation they have associated with, um, with I guess feeling things there at the chest wall and um, uh, yeah, that sort of stuff, and uh, that you can uh, find role models in society who, 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 who carry themselves quite happily with a flat chest or with a bald head, and not necessarily because of cancer. Um, so that was helpful to me. Okay, thank you.